Good morning children. Now we know what force is. So let's learn about pressure. Put the head of a nail on a wooden plank and hammer the pointed side of the nail. It wouldn't go in. If we put the pointed tip on the wooden plank and hammer the head with the same force, the nail would go in easily. So, we applied almost same force both the times. But, first time the nail didn't go through but the second time we were successful. What made this difference? If you observe, the head of the nail has more area than the tip which is pointed. We were using the same force but when we try to put the nail by the pointed end, we were applying more pressure. This force acting on an unit area of the surface is called pressure. So, in the second case, we applied the same force on a smaller area, which means we applied tremendous pressure that pushed the nail into the plank. If we see the formula for pressure, it is denoted by the expression pressure equal to force divided by the area. Here we see area is in the denominator. What does it mean? It means smaller the area, larger the pressure on the surface for the same applied force. This means pressure is inversely proportion to area. Decrease the area, pressure will increase for the same force. Now let us take another example to understand the concept of pressure. Can you cut this wood with this blunt iron bar? No, it is very hard. But if we apply the same force with a sharp axe, you can do it. As we know, an axe is a wedge. Force used may be same in both the cases, but when using an axe, you are applying more pressure as the sharp tip of the axe has very less area compared to the blunt piece of iron. So, because of this high pressure, the axe enters the plank. The area of the axe used for cutting is much smaller than that of blunt iron bar. The same force therefore produces a pressure sufficient to push the pointed end of the axe into the wooden plank. Clear? Let's see another examples of pressure. If you keep a heavy object in your palm, you will feel a downward pressure because of its weight, isn't it? Liquids and gases have weight too. So, liquids and gases apply downward pressure. If you fill a bucket with water and put it on your head, you will feel a pressure. Correct? So, now you understand what is pressure. Now you may ask, what is the unit of pressure? We know unit of force is Newton. And what is the unit of area? It is meter square. So, unit of pressure would be Newton per meter square. In SI system, unit of pressure is Pascal. 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter square. This means if you apply 1 Newton force or thrust on 1 meter square area, the applied pressure would be 1 Pascal. So to sum up what we learned today, force per unit area is called pressure. So the expression is pressure equal to force divided by area and the SI unit of pressure is 
Pascal. That's all for now. Bye-bye children.